idea what I'm doing, but it feels very fast indeed. Keep it pinned. Keep it pinned. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Ah, hello, and welcome to what is quite frankly going to be a ridiculous day because I have this key in my hand to that car right there, the brand new Bugatti Chiron Super Sport. Now, basically, Bugatti got in touch and said, "It's up to you. You can do whatever you want with the car, but you've only got." one day to do it so we had a think and we came back to them with the plan we wanted to pick up the car from the factory point it north head towards germany blast up the autobahn and then do a load of laps around the nurburgring during a tourist session and they came back to us and said all right then A quick recap then on exactly what this car is. You may recall back in 2019, Bugatti rocked the world when it recorded a 304.773 miles per hour run in a more powerful version of the Chiron with modified bodywork. A staggering feat, and we were there to witness it. Shortly afterwards, it announced a series of 30 cars. The 300 plus special edition would be built to commemorate that achievement and cost three million pounds each. Now this isn't a 300 plus, it's the standard 2.65 million pound super sport, but it gets the same bodywork modifications, the same eight litre quad turbo W16 engine boosted by 100 horsepower to 1,578 horsepower, and the same top speed limited to an entirely adequate 273 miles per hour. Now you're probably screaming at your screens and saying, just get on and drive the bloody thing, Jack. But I'm sorry, it's not every day you drive a Bugatti. It's certainly not every day you drive a Bugatti Chiron as special as the Super Sport. So forgive me if I just take this moment to take it all in. And I'll tell you what you forget from looking at this car in pictures and videos on YouTube is just how minimal the interior is. There's no central screen, there's no touch screens whatsoever. In fact, the dash in front of you is dominated by this massive speedometer. You've got a couple of screens either side of that that give you some information, but the dash is just dials for your aircon and various bits and bobs and everything is made in the most beautiful materials. This matte carbon fiber, this bright work everywhere. I'm loving this saddle brown leather looks fantastic yeah it's a special place to be before we set off then a quick word on the modes because once we're up and running i'll probably get too excited and forget to talk about them they're changed by a dial down here by my left hand you've got bugatti mode which gives you one degree of rake it's basically your general driving mode next to that you have this little motorway symbol here that's the autobahn mode so that gives you a higher lift at the back, a 20 degree rake, points the nose down to keep you glued to the road. And then the next one has a little flag here. So that's your track mode. That gives you four degrees of extra wing at the back and stiffens up the suspension. And then if you want to get really serious, you need to get this key down here. It's in a little holder down by my left thigh and it's called the top speed key. So you have to be stopped. You have to be in park and then you put it in a slot down here twist it and that unlocks the top speed it hunkers down the car um, it takes off the wing it reduces any downforce at the front end of the car it also performs a series of checks to make sure you're not about to kill yourself for example if your tires are more than two years old forget it it won't let you do it but we'll save that one for a little bit later for now Let's fire this engine up. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Nürburgring, here we come. Our route would take us north, crossing into Germany just south of Saarbrücken, joining the de-restricted A1 and carving our way towards the Eiffel Mountains. A journey of roughly three hours and 163 miles, according to Google. Surely we can improve on that. Okay, so we've just passed one of those glorious signs, the white circles with the black stripe through it, which basically means fill your boots. And before we do some big speed, I'm just cruising along here at 104, 105 miles an hour. And the point I wanna make is just how deeply into its comfort zone this car is. We're currently using, what, a, a third of its capabilities? not troubling the car 
one little bit. These days, anyone can go and get a V8 crate engine and boost it up to similar numbers, 1500 horsepower plus, but it's the fact that the whole thing feels so cohesive and so well oiled. That's the Bugatti magic. Oh, that's a nice straight bit. Oh, keep it pinned, keep it pinned. No idea what I'm doing, but it feels very fast indeed. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Go on, let's have a look at it then. 211, 211 miles an hour. That is by some distance the fastest I've ever gone in a car and I just did it on a public road. Oh, I'm buzzing, I'm tingling all over. So this car's sister car, if you like, Bedfellow, the Rimac Nevera, because of the Bugatti and Rimac have now teamed up. I bet you that car's quicker off the line, but the rolling performance in this thing is just astonishing. The way that that just gathered speed, boosting up and shooting you down the road again. Oh, it's utterly addictive. All right, let's check my stats. 211 miles an hour. So max horsepower deployed, 1,615, which I believe is actually more than it says on the spec sheet. So this car is producing more power than it claims. And I hit 6,963 RPM. But honestly, you can forget the numbers. It's the feeling you get in the seat of your pants and your stomach. And it's opened up again and I'm just, I'm having another little go. <laughs> You look down and you're doing 190. Thing is, you have to concentrate so hard on the horizon and what's going on in front of you. And it's only when you get a bit of a leveling out of the acceleration, if you can call it that, it's still hauling, that you dare to look down. And that's when you glance at what you've just done. I've got a feeling 211 is going to be it. I might have to call it a day there. Autobahn. And just enough time before the tourist session kicks off at the Nürburgring to fill up with fuel, stock up on merch, and get a feel for the car in the driving rain which has inevitably descended. This one then, number one. Uh, it's the Bugatti outside. Yes please, definitely a receipt for this one. Yeah. Now. As you can probably see, we've chosen one of the wettest days of the year to drive around the world's most dangerous racetrack in one of the world's fastest and most expensive cars on cold tyres. Top Gear's done some pretty stupid stuff in its time, but this might just take the biscuit. Okay, deep breath, here we go. It's probably the right time to tell you that my tyre Nürburgring experience amounts to three laps in a McGann RS, but I'm not going to worry about that because I've got a special passenger with me today. <laughs> the one and only Andy Wallace, the Mon winner. The man who did the 240 mile an hour top speed in the McLaren F1 and the 304 mile an hour run in the Sheeran Super Sport, which is why we're here in this car today. So, Andy, please tell me your experience here is greater than mine. It's greater than yours, but I haven't done a million laps or anything. You're not, you're not a ring expert. <laughs> I never really got to race in here in, modern, in a modern car. I've done a, uh, an old type of race. Yeah. So it's all, it's always a surprise each time you come to a corner. It looks very similar sometimes, but what a wonderful place. <laughs> what a wonderful place. Oh, that's cold tires there. Did you feel that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's start there with the cold tires because that's where all laps around here start. Nine degrees ambient temperature. We've got about 20 degrees, 21 degrees in each tire. You were telling me they need 35 to start working yeah, properly. 35 or a tad more to start in the wet to start yeah, working yeah, properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What followed was a protracted 20 corner ding dong with the diesel BMW 3 Series Compact because there simply wasn't enough grip to get past. It was quickly becoming apparent that this was about survival and not necessarily much fun. And then came the big moment. I have no idea what my face looks like. No. But it's it's anything like my bum hole. It is. <laughs> Puckered beyond belief. Yeah, um, tell you what, 
Jeremy, how do you fancy your game? Not, not very much really, it's too, it's too wet. Not being one to give up, I convinced Andy to wait for the rain to ease, and then he agreed to an exploratory lap. Slipper is that? Yeah. You see what I mean? It's even one of the world's top drivers was struggling out there. So when you read the story in the magazine, and it's me coming over the crest, fully lit, getting air, holding it sideways for just, you know, just to go with it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, well.